Why are films and producers and directors so apt to marketing their films as no CGI, as if it's like a good selling point? Thank you. How does Thank it feel you. to be our resident expert? On CGI? Yeah. Uh, I like it. It's good. <laughs> I like being an expert on something. Yeah. This actually sparked from a conversation we were having in the Discord. <clears throat> so what do you guys consider invisible or hidden CGI? Can you kind of describe what that would be for the audience? Mm -hmm. Why are we swinging over to where CGI is now this like bad term, this bad tool that's being used? But before we started this episode, you said you had a controversial opinion and we told you to save it for the episode. So I'm dying to hear what that is. The VFX. The CGI in Avatar failed. Welcome to Backseat Directing. Where we talk about movies, TV shows, comics, and more. We're your hosts, Andrew and Aaron with Dan. Hello. We put out new episodes every Monday and Thursday. And on this episode, we're talking about Hollywood's love-hate relationship with CGI. All right, three, two, one, action. <laughs> Aaron, do you know how proud of myself I was that I waited for you to introduce our guest yes. and hit the, the line right on the first yes. try? We crushed it. In my head, I was like the uh, that Jordan Peele meme where he's like sweating <laughs> from uh, Ian Peele. A lot of times we don't have guests, so Andrew will kind of cut him off, cut me off when I'm saying the guest's name. So today we have Dan the Man on the show. He's our go-to guy for everything CGI. CGI. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I practiced that. <laughs> that was a rehearsal. Dan Brown, the CGI man. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Dan. Thank you. How does it feel you. to be our resident expert? On CGI? Yeah. Uh, I like it. It's good. <laughs> I like being an expert on something. Yeah. It makes me feel validated. <laughs> that you are, my friend. That you are. So, so Jinx. <laughs> I was just gonna. I was just gonna list some of your credentials. Okay. Uh, I was gonna say Dan, uh, for a living, works with CGI, and you've had us, you've had you on the show before mm -hmm. for our previous episode on CGI, where we did some looking at some great CGI scenes throughout history. We looked at some shots from Jurassic Park. Go back and check out that episode. It was a whole lot of fun. And also, we looked at bad CGI examples. Too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we're gonna be talking a little bit about all of that today. This actually sparked from a conversation we were having in the Discord. <clears throat> check that check that out. Check that out. Link in the description of this video. But yeah, you shared a YouTube video mm -hmm. that was talking about hidden CGI in Hollywood movies. Yeah, yeah. Let me find the name real quick here. It was it's a beautiful video pro uh, project uh, that this guy did under Oh my goodness. Now, of course, I can't find. It. Here it is. Uh, the movie Rabbit Hole, no CGI is really just invisible CGI. Yes, that's what it was. So what do you guys consider invisible or hidden CGI? Can you kind of describe what that would be for the audience? Invisible CGI is something that you don't know. Like, it doesn't yeah. take you out of the story. You are completely invested in the story, and it's so seamless, and it's so good that it just marries perfectly with any practical effects or practical set pieces or actors. So you don't actually get taken out of the story. Yeah. You think they actually filmed it in real life. Yeah. So when I watch Avengers Endgame and Thanos shatters a moon and slams it into Iron Man, that is visible CGI. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Due to simply the scope of it. I, wa I wasn't sure when I saw it. <laughs> so what's a, what's a better example of the v invisible is CGI? It, <laughs> this is going to be unpopular, but the jets in Top Gun. Yes. The, and that's one of the movies that that guy was talking about in his video so i'll link that video down in the description if anyone wants to go check it out it was a really good video he has four of them that kind of talk about the same topic mm -hmm. and each kind of progresses so definitely check those out uh if you haven't already but yeah that was one of the big ones that he was talking about because they were selling that movie on the fact that they did this for real these are real planes we're actually in the cockpit you know we're feeling the g's we're we're Flying the planes and using the cameras ourselves, like we're a one-man crew up in here. Well, I mean, for that movie, you got Tom Cruise on set. He's doing some. The the confusion I think lies in he is doing some genuine genuine piloting. He was showing up to set 
flying to set, like flying his plane to set. And uh, there's an interview, a great interview with, I felt like Donald Trump does a great interview, the best interview with, uh, with Glenn Powell. And he's, he's talking about <laughs> a huge interview. It's going to be the best. But Glenn Powell's talking about how that filming that movie, he got the bug for, for flying kind of the same way Tom Cruise did filming the original Top Gun. And Glenn Powell now has a piloting license. And he actually, super cool fact, Tom Cruise got him some of his like pilot hours and, uh, and simulations. Like he went and used Tom Cruise's yeah. simulation system. So that's really it's, cool. So there is like some, that's where the wires get crossed and people are like, see them on press tour saying, yeah, we were really flying planes and we got the G-force on our face so that you could see it in camera. But that doesn't mean that every single shot in the movie is yeah. done with practical. That, that doesn't mean when they're doing these complex maneuvers in the air that that's Miles Teller up there in the plane. It's not quite to that level of seriousness. They might have him, somebody else piloting the plane with them in the plane to show the G-force on their face for some of the shots. And then some of the other shots of them in the cockpit might be special effects enhanced. Okay, so if they weren't actually flying those jets, what was happening in Top Gun Maverick? So Top Gun Maverick, they weren't lying. They really did fly planes, but they were stunt planes. They weren't the actual jets. They're not flying F-16s. They're just flying regular jets that they then replaced using CG uh, F-16s. And then one of the planes doesn't even exist. So it obviously had to be completely fabricated in computer. Yeah, that's super. They always invent in the Top Gun movies like some super special plane that's brand new and they have mm -hmm. to find a way to beat it because it's got the best systems. I just out of curiosity, I looked up the cost of the, the F-16. General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon costs around $63 million. So I could see why they'd be inclined to maybe use some special effects for an F-16 instead yeah. of risking you one on a set. That and it kind of makes the budget a little balloon. <laughs> yeah. like it uh, goes out of, I don't think the studio would really like that. And the Navy does help out a lot with mm -hmm. the Top Gun movies, because especially with the first Top Gun movie, there was a huge influx of enlistment following the movie and the hype mm -hmm. that came along with it. So they do work heavily with the Navy, but there's a limit. I mean, there's a limit to the risk they'll take right. uh, for movie set action. These are huge taxpayer dollars at stake. Yes. They're not going to just waste some of these planes. $63 million. Yeah. It's got to be a lot cheaper to do special effects. Yeah. Um, a lot of times what's happening, too, with invisual, invisible CGI is like the background. They're expanding the frame of what they actually have. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what happened a lot in Top Gun Maverick, too. Not only are the planes fake, but the environment they're changing to match the story. Yeah. They're they they're actually flying so the actors reactions to the plane is real. Mm -hmm. But everything else you see besides them is not real. Yeah. It's computer generated CG. Yeah. And I, No, go ahead. You you talk. It was and that's the thing is when it's so good that people don't see it. Yeah. Not taken out of the movie, that's when a visual effect has the greatest effect. Yeah. It means it's good. Whereas if it takes you out of it, then it's not an it's not an effective visual effect. I mean, no time at watching Top Gun Maverick was I like, oh, that's not real. Yeah. <laughs> you that's, know, I, I was like, dang, that's, they're so that's, cool. That's, <laughs> and that's why it's good. You yeah. could certainly convince me that they crashed planes for that movie. Oh, I mean, yeah. if I like, if I didn't know the cost of one of the planes, mm -hmm. I think one of the most, from my perspective, one of the most commonly used and and hard to spot uses of invisible CGI in movies is just kind of the things that they do that smooth out the edges of something, whether it be, they mentioned it in the most recent episode that I saw of the boys, taking the wrinkles maybe off of Homeland or, mm -hmm. or fixing a little, something that's just a little bit off in a shot. One thing that Aaron brought to my attention a while ago was, um, I believe we were talking about 1917, mm. when because 1917, they have such long so length cool. shots, yeah. amazing movie. But it's hard to imagine through all those lengthy shots that there was never a time when the actor's eyeline crossed or looked into the camera. It's a really hard thing to avoid. So subtle CGI goes in there in terms of moving, little eye movements so that they don't look at the camera and take the audience right out of the film in doing so. Yeah, with, with that movie, uh, 1917, if you're not familiar, it's made to be like a one take, the entire movie. Um, I think there's like one or two like cuts per se. So in order to make that happen, there's a lot of match cuts, but then there's also a lot of CG eye transitions. And the one that I can think of off the top of my head that I've seen like the, the back uh, behind the scenes stuff of mm -hmm. is when he's like sliding down this little ridge 
and he's going from one of the days that they were shooting, the start of him starting to slide, and then it's connecting to the end through CGI. So his character actually sliding down the trench mm -hmm. was all computer-generated model mm -hmm. of the actual actor. So then it they used that to blend the two shots from the two different days to make one one person sliding down the ridge. I got to see that. Yeah. 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 It was I saw it on um Corridor Crew, yeah. VFX Artist React. Okay. So, so that's where you can look that one okay. up. Um but I was like you yeah. know cuz that's invisible CGI. I, I never have imagined. Yeah. yeah. Like I can see Probably not all of them, but I can find a lot of like the cuts, the match cuts, you know, where they're doing that. But that, like, he's in the frame the whole time. Nothing's going in front of the frame or anything like that. And it's like, wow, that's that's crazy. So that's I, what we're talking about. I have a little game that I want to play with you guys as we go along, and I'm gonna to try to do the research as different movies come up. The idea of the game is that the audience can play along with us, so I don't want you guys to answer right away. This is a little second to think about it, but I want you to try to guess how many visual effect shots are in a movie. I'll, I'll name the movie. <laughs> oh, goody. And we'll see if, I'm gonna give you guys, I'm gonna give <laughs> this you. Is, this is funny. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put a good perspective okay. on it. I'm gonna give you a, a frame of reference too. So from what I found online, this is all Google search results, by the way, guys, don't attack me, but <laughs> I'm not on the sets of the movies. So from Google search results, it says there's 1000 VFX shots in the first Iron Man. So that's your frame of reference. First Iron Man, 2008, 1,000 shots. Some of the other movies we'll compare. I'm going to bring up two movies here. First one we're just talking about, 1917. I'm going to just explain because it doesn't have a straight answer. That movie is really strange because when they were asked about it, they explained that normally they, said normally they would say like 300 or 1,500. But in the case of this movie, it's so weird and blended because a lot of the, the VFX are blending shots together, moving eye lines. You can watch that movie and think the whole thing looks practical. Yeah. I mean, there's... I'm wondering with shots like him jumping off the bridge and floating in the water, how they actually accomplished it has to be some form of special effects. The way they broke it down is they said 91% of the shots in the movie have some form of visual effects in it. I believe it. You can watch that movie and think it looks entirely practical. And 91%. Yeah. That's how well yeah. hidden it is. It's a great example of hidden. But I want you guys now to guess, and the audience to guess along with us, how many shots by number do you think our visual effects in Top Gun Maverick, a movie we were just talking about a few minutes ago. And this is the movie that they were marketing as being practical, that there's no CGI. They were saying no CGI. That was the selling point yeah. for the movie. Uh, which I want to circle back to. Don't let me forget yeah, that yeah, point. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say if Iron Man had 1,000, this one... I was going to start at 1,500, but I think that's too low, isn't it? Or maybe that's about right. How many shots are in that movie? Yeah, I'll say fifteen hundred. I can try to look. I feel like it's more than Iron. Shots. I don't yeah. know. I don't. I feel like it's more than Iron Man. They had to replace a lot. They had to replace a lot. But then again, Iron Man. His also, suit. Yeah. His yeah, suit is ninety percent yeah. like CGI and most so, of the shots. So what, what do we got here? What's you the have, answer? Dan, do you have a guess? I'm guessing. Um, I'm gonna say. I can't find the number of shots in the movie. I'd say twelve hundred. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just. For the audience reference, I'm just pulling this number out of my butt. I have no logical <laughs> yeah, it's a way to answer this. I remember this. being yeah. invested in the movie. I was not even yeah. thinking of CGI. Well, yeah. People might not even know that there are this many shots in a movie. So yeah. the answer, according to the Hollywood Reporter, is 2,400 VFX shots. <laughs> Twice See? as many as I guess. <laughs> I wanted to say 2,000, but I was like, no, that's, that's so high. In a, movie, in a movie like Aaron mentioned, that is touted for using a lot of practical shots. Hundred shots. Just goes to show. Way. Just wants to show how much more there are than you think. Jeez. Now I have another one here, just because we're in the we're in the swing of it. Now another very popular movie, well known for its visual effects, is Avengers Endgame. Mm. How many visual effect shots do you guys think are in Avengers Endgame? Three thousand. I'm, I'm, I'm swinging three thousand. Yeah, yeah like, three thousand. Uh, almost the whole thing yeah, is CGI. Yeah. Half the characters are nothing yeah. but CGI. Yeah. All right. And it looks very good. Yeah. So. It has nearly 2,500 VFX shots out of roughly 2,700 total shots. Oh my goodness. So 300 or less shots, and this is what it says. I know, the, I know the math says 200, but it says nearly 300 shots or less are actually only practical in that movie. The vast majority of the movie has some form of visual effects in each shot. Think about Thanos. Every, yeah. every scene with Rocket Raccoon, yep. every scene with Thanos, scenes with Gamora. Anytime they're flying. Hulk. Yep. Hulk any scene with Hulk, exactly, because yeah. he's literally, 
is Endgame. Yeah, so he's yeah. Professor Hulk the entire movie. Yeah. I mean, the, even their suits that they use to time entirely travel entirely CGI. Those are all awesome. CGI. The anytime, the, anytime the gauntlet's on screen, the Iron Man gauntlet. Yep. A, a, aging. They aged Cat, Captain America. Yep. Because five years had passed. Mm -hmm. Man, that's so much. So much, yeah. This is so much fun for me. Because I, cool. I know all the answers. Uh, how many more you got? What, what, what's next? I've got one more. How many visual? How many VFX shots do you guys think is in Oppenheimer? This was good. This is my favorite. This oh is a goodness. good one, yeah. Uh, so this was another movie that it's, came out recently that was marketed, marketed as yeah, Chris, practical. Chris Nolan is yeah, like very no cool. CGI. Yeah. Pra we practically shot the atom bomb. Well, this one was marketed as no CGI, which yeah. is even more so than yeah. Top Gun Maverick or mm -hmm. movies with low CGI. This one... I don't know if they specifically put out this message themselves or not, but a lot of people online were saying this movie has no, no CGI. Chris Nolan is quoted as yeah. he's in several interviews, like recorded saying, we will not do it CGI. The answer is more than zero. I'll give you guys <laughs> that hint. I'm going to say, so this was on the mm -hmm. the episodes or Rabbit shows hole. that he, hole, that yeah. Dan shared with us. And if you're not counting the version that played overseas where they put a dress on Florence Pugh, I'm gonna say. Shane. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say 800. Is that too high? I'd say a thousand. Okay, it's actually lower. Three three hundred. Uh, according to Studio Binder, the film uses a hundred VFX shots and four hundred practical elements. I only, don't only fully comes. understand what that means, but I gotcha. <laughs> it, oh, the, the basic grounds of it is that Studio Binder says 100 VFX shots, yeah. whereas Avengers had 2,500. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, you can market it as but, basically having none. Well, that's just it. Is It, it wasn't a VFX movie. Yeah. Right. It, it, the bomb going off and some of the atoms, like the close-ups of the atoms, but otherwise... Well, it's about three hours of people chatting. That's really... Talking. It, I mean, the colorist had more work in that movie than the VFX <laughs> supervisor by far. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I'll pull up more movies if we get into talking about other ones that are popular. Yeah. So this is kind of where the conversation comes from, where there's that love-hate relationship in Hollywood, like we said, for the title of this episode. Why are films and producers and directors so apt to marketing their films as no cgi as if it's like a good selling point you know like you should be proud you should come and watch this because we did this practically mm -hmm. why are we swinging over to where cgi is now this like bad term this bad tool that's being used it comes down to i, I blame reddit uh, Reddit is the devil. Um, it became like... It's the first thing that shows up when I was searching how many CGI shots mm -hmm. in the average movie, this and that. Reddit's like, why is CGI ruining movies? Yeah. R slash... Yeah. We're all angry. You got a lot of <laughs> angry people, uh, backseat directors, sitting in there. Uh, hey, they're not official. <laughs> They're not, not affiliated with us. You guys, buddy, you guys are the real deal, okay? But you know, Fly home, buddy. We <laughs> <laughs> work alone. <laughs> if, if everybody's super special, then oh, nobody, oh, oh, is. nobody is. We are special. <laughs> <laughs> We're monetized now. Such a great movie. Two dollars oh, seventy-four cents production. <laughs> Anyways, I get ten percent, right? Yeah, not to cut you off. No, you no, get ten cents. I swear, ten cents. <laughs> ten cent. Yeah. <laughs> so, it comes down to it. There was a snowball effect where people started talking, because there was bad CGI. I mean, never seen we, it. Oh, really? You, you never saw bad CGI like the never, rock never, turning into a scorpion? Oh my God, the mummy too. That has to be the num the worst CGI. The I don't know. Have you seen the Flash? Oh, yeah. The Matrix Three is some of my least favorite CGI, and maybe it's just because I love the Matrix One so much. Mm. Like the when it looks like a PlayStation Two video game, a la yeah. the Mummy <laughs> Two or Matrix Three, it's very like distracting to the eyes. Mm, yeah. You're like, oh, I'm watching a movie, and they did not do a good job with yeah. this. And that I think is. Pardon the term, and I don't mean to be insulting, but ignorance about how movies are made. That it's not CGI that was the devil. It's just bad visual effects, which you can have impractical just fine. And what's the difference there? Visual effects are just anything. VFX are any kind of uh, d uh, effect done in post-production that involves something that can't be done practically. A moon being blown up. 
or a fighter jet crashing. They can't really crash a real fighter jet with a pilot inside. So they'll either choose to do it in a model or they'll do it, use it. But even a model, they're going to have to do some touch-ups in the end. An editor will come in and change it. That could be a visual effect. A visual effect is also can be done in CGI, computer generated imagery. Not all CGI, not all CGI is a visual effect. Not all VFX are CGI. Yeah, I think a great example uh, that helped me understand it is in the movie RoboCop, they use something called compositing. They take a real practical model or um, puppet from the that department in the film lot and then they composite the shot of that real practical thing into mm -hmm. another shot in the film yeah. rather than completely generating it from app from in post you know yeah I mean? and and for just to explain that even further compositing just means that you have two clips mm -hmm. that you're layering on top of each other so let's say you have a model of this toy or whatever you film that maybe it's on a green screen so then you remove the green screen so now you just see that model there and you lay that in on top of your footage and that's compositing that's a vfx and, and a lot of people yes. on a bare bones level are able to do this themselves slash do do it themselves now i mean you can be in cap cut or any number of apps and mm -hmm. put a background remover on a yeah. video and then put that people do it to make video yeah. memes it's very and common a, now a computer didn't make it a computer just helped you put it together. Yeah. And in the case of CGI, it would be like Gollum. He's pure CGI. He, there, there isn't a real Gollum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know. they're using a model. Uh, well, they're using a stand-in, a person to motion capture the performance for reference, right. but then they're completely computer generating yeah. the image of Gollum based on that reference. Yeah. And so that's how they're doing it. That would be an example of good CGI, which is a good vi visual effect. And so... People became, uh, CGI became a pejorative, a uh, trash bin term for something that anything that's bad is CGI. It has to be mm -hmm. CGI because it's bad. I hate that movie because of the CGI in it. Just like now people are saying the word AI for anything. Anything right. generated by a computer is AI. Yeah, and we were talking about that in the Discord today as well. Right? And it's not. An AI didn't necessarily generate right. all of them, but right. somebody called it AI. I remember reading it in a Reddit and I'm like, that's not AI. AI mm -hmm. didn't really exist back then, as mm -hmm. we know it today. Yeah. So it, it's ignorance on, in the form of um, people who really feel entitled to their opinions. And of course, everybody's entitled to an opinion, but it doesn't necessarily make that opinion right. Except people that disagree with us. That's true. But I want to circle us back to the game because we brought up another movie. I want to know how many visual effect shots do you guys think are in Two Towers? The second Lord of the Rings film. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. All the armies. This, this film also features several 3D characters in starring roles. Yeah, yeah, you tree beard. And Gollum. Way does crowd simulation software I'm, was used on larger scale battles. So I think they filmed some of the largest battles at the time. I think they filmed in what, New Zealand or something yeah. for Lord of the Rings. And they, they have some huge sloping hills with a lot of practical mm -hmm. characters. And then like Aaron said about expanding the background, mm -hmm. filling in that mm -hmm. greater audience, like things like Gladiator, like they're not filling out a Coliseum sized, yeah. you know, area of a lot mm -hmm. full of extras. Mm -hmm. They're going to fill it. They're going to get some people in the front rows mm -hmm. and they're going to fill in those back rows with CGI. Yep. So knowing that, knowing Lord of the Rings has these huge epic battle shots, Knowing that Avengers Endgame has 2,500, how many shots do you think is in two towers? 1,800. I think it might surprise you. I was going to say 18, too. So they both say 1,800. You had your time to guess in the audience. The answer, according to Google, is around 920 digital effect shots. And I think that, I think that goes to show, maybe that, that's another branch into a conversation here, is that movies like the two towers, I'm going to look up exactly when it was made. Anything with Sauron... But Helm's Deep was a practical model. So Two Towers came out in 2002. So there's a huge shift, I feel like, in the efforts to make something more practical when you look at these early 2000s movies like, you know, like the Lord of the Rings films, like Hellboy, you know, mm -hmm. Guillermo, Guillermo, del Toro's, Guillermo del Toro's version. There was a huge shift from then to now where I think CGI used to be an element it used to be an element used like a, a tool finishing, filling out things, mm -hmm. and CGI has moved a little bit more towards being really dominant in movies. Yeah. And I think that's part of, people feel nostalgic for those times, and I feel like that's part of what's making people act like CGI is the enemy now. I think yeah. that's a factor. 
people miss the people go back and watch your pan's labyrinth and mm. you know batman returns and mm -hmm. they they feel nostalgic for that so when they see movies saying they use little cg little cgi they feel like it's this similar to they're like oh it's just like star wars that movie came out when i was a kid and i love the puppets on that movie and and even the the star wars tv shows and new star wars content is trying to like get back to that to yeah. you know put their foot on that on that nostalgia factor I, I think that's a big part of it too whether they like the cgi or not it makes yeah. it feel like it's like the movies they grew up with so if with computers we can generate and make anything mm -hmm. why is it that there is bad CGI. Like, how does that end up happening? Budget and time. Can you um, elaborate on that a little? So, like any visual effect, if you don't give your artist enough time to cook, the, the meal's going to be unprepared. It's not going to look right. Mm -hmm. Whereas, if you give them time and you have a high enough budget, you're going to be good. Mostly. I will say that Godzilla Minus One had a far smaller budget than a traditional Hollywood film, mm -hmm. and yet Godzilla in that movie looks really good. Yeah. The CGI in that movie is very good. Won the Oscar. It did. Yeah, incredible. The sets look really good. It's it shocking a, for the budget. Yeah. It was like a $10 million movie, I believe? No, it's a little more than that. It was $38 million, I believe. Something like that. Pretty yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm going to find out for you. We have all the answers in the world at, the, at our fingertips. Uh, Godzilla minus one has an estimated budget of fifteen million. Fifteen okay. million, yeah. that's very low. But how much is that? Yeah. In, how much is that in yen? <laughs> well, taking into account current, yeah. <laughs> really, it goes down to those people on Reddit, right? They buy movie tickets. Mm. Popcorn is at stake, and so the movie industry is going to try to pander to them to get them into the movies to buy the tickets. So if it becomes a selling point, we don't put in any CGI. And yet CGI is consistently cheaper to do yep. than you can't build a 150 foot high monster. Right. Physical. Or even hire 2000 people to be in a crowd. Right. And then you have to costume all them. You have to feed them all. Mm -hmm. And that was brought out in Napoleon. There's Massive armies, they'll get extras in there, maybe 150 of them. Yeah, people but, will do it for free. Oh, It'd yeah. be on a Ridley Scott movie just for fun. But like you, you said, the costuming them. and feeding them is a different story. Mm -hmm. You have to feed people. And so what happens is it becomes very expensive. Now, if you have 200,000 extras in a movie, there's no way you could, it becomes so it's a logistical nightmare. It is a logistical nightmare. You, you can't possibly manage all those people. How right. is one director going to be able to handle that much, that many cast members? But even just from the standpoint of doing waivers, if everyone has to hand up, fill out a waiver, that's 200,000 waivers. <laughs> that takes where, six weeks. Where just you're going to have, like, paper is you're that? have like a, a giant, like, 90s style uh, memory card, like, storage for all your waivers. How much does 2,000 pens cost? I mean, come on. <laughs> you yeah. got to add these numbers and up. And lawyers. You have yep. to hire all the lawyers, the legal represent. It's just ridiculous. So, And how does that compare to the effort and resources that it takes to make, like, a 2,000-person crowd? In, in, a, in a computer software? Yeah. yeah. It could be done relatively quickly. What does that mean? It could be, I mean, depends on how much you want do you want an army? Crowd simulations can be done very quickly now. I mean, week. You could do it in a week. Could you do, I, a, yeah. was that, could you do a bad job in a week? What, what do you I think? I mean, you're going to do a post. I wouldn't. Let me think for a second. I, I'd say a week to do the prelims. And what is that? That's just giving you a visual of, like, it's not even true color. It's okay. not lit. It's not no shaders. Yeah. It's just yeah. a bunch of characters that look really 2D running. Yeah. yeah. Just mm -hmm. to show you, is this the direction you want to go, Mr. Director? You know, Mr. Norman, yeah. is yeah. this how you want? Is, yeah. And when you, and then the final is clothing them all, but you're just really copy pasting 10 characters over so, and over again. Say me and Aaron were trying to do a film mm -hmm. and we asked you to do a crowd of a, f a thousand running at a crowd of a thousand, what in your dream world would be how long of a time span we would give you a heads up that we wanted that done? Oh, in the, in the dream world? Six months. Uh, but if it's not six months, it can feasibly be done and still look good. Now, is that you doing it? And if you didn't have a team? Because oh. most of these movies, 
when many, it comes to their VFX as oh, a yeah, team. Oh yeah, they have thousands of VF, sometimes thousands of VFX artists on a on a, any given. Like you see the list of names in the credits. If, yeah. if anybody ever wonders how many VFX artists are working on one of these films that say they don't have VFX, by the way, yeah, just watch the credits. Yeah. <laughs> right, and there's like six. That's art weird. House I like working. I've been lied to. You know, right? That's weird. What were you paying those 500 people for? Yeah, right? <laughs> and it's a lot of names. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of people working on these things. And yeah. each one just works on one aspect of it. The, yeah. the, the cloth sim, the hair sim, whatever. Yeah. In the case of that, like in Napoleon, they're all wearing uniforms. So they're all wearing the same uniform. You only need one uniform, maybe two for one yeah. a, a general. Maybe they're all stormtroopers. Yeah, right? They all look alike. I wanna, I do want to talk with you guys a little bit more about that nostalgia factor and maybe movies from when all of us were younger. Because um, I see the appeal. I think that part of what people look at when they are looking at a movie and somebody says, oh, it has very little CGI, is it makes it feel maybe more classic in the sense that when you look at the art form, the medium at its bare bones, when you look back at when it started, people had to use practical elements and they got very, very creative and stylized with those practical elements. And it made some of the coolest films of all time. I mean, looking at E.T. and Jaws, two Spielberg movies, I mean, Bruce the Shark being practically made and E.T. being a puppet, I think is they're very impressive and they worked really, really well for the time and they hold up really well even watching them you know mm -hmm. 30 40 years later um so i think that part of that element is it like when you're when you're looking at and you're listening to music i mean there's a component to classical music that is hard to repeat now so i think that's part of what people really like about it is it feels like that time period and i think a lot of people they think that it's the medium that's doing that that's driving the appreciation value they think since it's practical that it negates the artist but yoda's puppeting is so good it's the artist operating the puppet that's well, that's selling it making him one of the most beloved characters of all time i i literally whatever it is now 40 years later i watch empire strikes back and laugh out loud mm -hmm. at yoda because yeah. they made a great character but that's not the puppet the puppet is a lifeless rubber thing it's Frank Oz yeah. operating it. <laughs> you know, many years have I watched you. You know, like that is who is doing it. And yeah. so he's the one selling the character. And so in the end, it's not about the medium that's bringing to life. It's the artist behind the medium oh, that's yeah. driving yeah. the life behind it that you can appreciate. And that's what people are actually looking for. And you can argue the same thing for the special effects in a movie. I mean, there's an artist behind every VFX shot, just like yourself, who worked hard on the shot to make it look good and to give it life. So, I mean, whether it's real or not, there's still artistry behind it. Mm -hmm. It's just new artistry. Like to compare it to painting, it's like modern art looks different, has a different style. You might like that more than, you know, cubism or impressionism. So it's just kind of like, it's a medium. I have the beholder kind of thing mm -hmm. at that point. It's not necessarily CGI can't be defined as good or bad yeah. in that sense. Yeah, do you think like maybe the reason why these practical elements feel more lively or or kind of pass as an effect more so than CGI, do you think it's because since it's practical on set, it's got to look good there. And if it doesn't, they're going to stop and make the adjustments. And so they're allotting this amount of time to get it right. But then in CGI, it's like, hey, we have three weeks to get this done, and that's all we're going to give you. And it's like maybe they didn't plan enough, or maybe the the director and or the studio isn't overly familiar with the ins and outs of CGI, so then they give a three-week deadline when really it's a three-month project. Right. It's great when we get somebody like, uh, what, like Alex Gar Garland or... Um What's the what's the director of Rogue One? Gareth Edwards. Mm -hmm. Gareth Edwards is a great example because he is somebody with a CGI background. He understands special effects background. Yeah. 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 So then, in that example, he's shooting with the visual effects in mind. Mm -hmm. He knows what it's going to take, where it's going to go, and how they're going to use it. But maybe like when the CGI doesn't land, they're not planning for it properly, or they're not giving enough time, like you said, to the artists mm -hmm. to cook. And it, it was, and that came from. Back in the early 2000s, nine, 1999 to mid-2000s, there was this thing, this idea in Hollywood that computers could do anything. Mm -hmm. 
So let's just throw it at the, the visual effects company and have them put it in their little computer and their little nerds. Oh, beautiful yeah. in three yeah. weeks, right? It's done. Push button, make awesome <laughs> graphics. <laughs> and that's not how it works. It's yeah, like yeah. anything, you have to have time, like you said, to they have to sit down and go, how do we accomplish this? How do we get yeah. this done? I do that with Aaron the whole, I joke that with Aaron the whole time we go through like our script writing process for a short film, the whole time we're filming, I'd be like, oh, well, yeah, just like CGI six pack on me right there or, or CGI explosion in there. And Aaron's like, yeah, nobody. I'm, <laughs> that's, that's not how it's gonna work. CGI six pack. <laughs> or even in a more realistic example of like the same thing of like, Oh, like this won't take as long to, to shoot or this won't take. Yeah. And in reality, it's like, well, actually, that'll probably take four hours mm -hmm. instead of the one hour that we were originally thinking, you know, because things add up. And that I think maybe that's why practical effects sometimes end up looking really good, because you have to get them looking good on set. The problem is, is that if anybody's ever watched cheap 80s horror films, there are some practical effects that look awful. <laughs> there, there, there's some that you're just like, really? Yeah. They yeah. Like, oh. Well, even classic ones. Me personally, and I don't or know. Or even our films. Yeah. <laughs> Hush. I, I don't know if They're people- They're beautiful. I feel like people what? would- uh, <laughs> I feel like I could definitely get hate comments for this, but I find it very hard to watch the first Alien because of how evidently it is a man- In a suit. In a suit. Mm. Um, I don't know his story. No. Oh, it is so cool. You have Separate to episode. Let's do oh, it. Yeah, Boom. that's a good one. Oh, is a, that is a cool story. He died, but... Uh, whoa, that's a, whoa, 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 what? He didn't die during the production of the movie, but that, that, that guy doesn't... I, I remember reading he died. Yeah. He's a really cool story. You said him. it like that's what made it cool. <laughs> he died. <laughs> I have this cool story. It ends in death. Xenomorph <laughs> guy. But I mean, yeah, it's it's all very impressive. But to me, it takes me out of the movie. And right. um, then the effect failed. Yeah. If it takes you out of the movie, the effect failed. But also, I watched it for the first time in 2023. You know, yeah. it came out in like 79 or something. When you first saw that movie, it blew away people in theaters. Oh yeah. Mm. Like. I think it also has to go with the fact that the actors on it are so good and that they're believable in their reactions. Sigourney sure. Weaver is yeah. a great actress. Well, that's a hard thing to imagine, too. Um, like Aaron mentioned, nowadays they're going to film it beforehand. For example, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. James Franco interacting with Andy Serkis while Andy Serkis is wearing a motion capture suit. He might not have seen what Caesar the actual ape looked like mm -hmm. until the movie premiere, yeah. depending on how much insight he has into behind the scenes of the production, how much he cares to see it, this and that. He might not have, until he sat down in his seat at the theater, like, wow, that looks really good. <laughs> I was just looking at Andy Serkis's face the whole time with dots yeah. on it. That's a crazy thing to imagine, is that the actors are forced to interact outside of the practical elements with all these, they're forced to imagine that this fur is there when they're touching, you know, Andy oh, Serkis's face. Suit, like, uh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're forced to really imagine these things and that changes the performance too. Sometimes they might be interacting with a ball on a pole yeah. and imagining it's a dragon's face and, in, and, and showing fear to that and responding to that. And then it's somebody in the background yells, He's breathing fire now. And then, <laughs> oh, I'm hot. Like, that's a completely yeah. different beast than practical elements. Yeah. And, but in the end, like, those interactions, Andy Serkis is so good. Oh, yeah. His performances are so believable that people actually have visceral... The other actors on set, you can see them in the BTSs. Like, the other actors on set are having visceral reactions to Andy Serkis. Like, he's presenting, even though he doesn't look like it, mm -hmm. he's still carries himself. He's that ring. character. He's at, yeah. at least motion capture bridges that gap for the actor where they're not just interacting with a ball and a stick or yeah. or in some cases, actually nothing. You yeah. know, looking at a green tarp and pretending you're seeing this mm -hmm. beautiful magical landscape mm -hmm. has got to be an acting challenge to say the least. Yeah. Nothing but respect for actors nowadays who have it a lot harder than stage and screen back in the day. When Humphrey Bogart was on set, you know, he saw Ingrid Bergman too face to face in all of his interactions with her. So, you know, Casablanca is, but it's, Casablanca has a surprising number of VFX shots in it. <laughs> Some actors nowadays go on set and interact with their co-star for, you know, a couple days out of weeks and weeks of shooting. It's, in, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I want to kind of pivot a little bit. Before we started this episode, you said you had a controversial opinion, and we told you to save it for the episode. So I'm dying to hear what that is. The VFX, the CGI in Avatar failed. A so, Avatar, the out, movie. Way of Water, or? Yeah, Way of Water, both of them, really. But He's talking about The Last Airbender. We're good. No, no. <laughs> the Last Airbender, I'm not even going to say. <laughs> but, um, so The Way of Water. Yeah. The, wow. Both, well, he said both. Both what? of them. So explain to us in the yeah. audience why it failed, because that is an egregious assertion. We're, we're getting comments right now. I know. <laughs> You're going to love this. What? Right? what? This is what you wanted. Or yeah. uh, I'll just read you some of the hate comments on the <laughs> most recent TikTok. It's like, it's like a it red light like. on my forehead. They're coming for you, uh, If I were to guess the comments based on our TikTok page, yapper, professional yapper. Bro is yapping. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, that's, that's like, awesome. yeah, you... You, you clicked on the podcast. That's all right? I've been told. That's, what, that's, <laughs> that's audio medium, brother. Literally what we're doing. Yeah. We're talking. It's a podcast. Anyways, we're going to distract you here. Yeah. Okay, so back Explain to the Explain to yourself, sir. Controversy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so remember at the outset when I said what makes a good visual effect? Does it take you out of the movie? Mm -hmm. Are you focused on the CGI or are you focused on the story? I can't tell you the story of <laughs> Way Up Water. I can Okay, that's great, but I can't. <laughs> is it because the, the CGI effects is were so good. too good? But it's obviously CGI. It's a CGI fest. And so if we're going to be... But it's trying to marry visual, uh, CGI with real live action. Now, if it was a totally animated film, that would be okay. I mean, it kind of is. It kinda. mostly is. This very little. <laughs> like, if you watch... The, like, and if you watch... The, the behind the scenes of how they accomplish some of this stuff, where the one kid, they cut off his legs in computer and put on fake legs to interact with the water. Until center. you said in computer, I was like, wow, they were really dedicated. No, that's practical movie. effect. How like, they get they the parents to sign off, off on cutting off his legs? There's no CGI in yeah. Avatar yeah. Way of Water. Oh, 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 All <laughs> stunts are real. <laughs> the audition just sign just said, how bad do you want it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but in the end, I watched the movie and was just floored by the CGI. The CGI is astonishing. There's one shot where there's a fisher, uh, one, of the, one of the Na'vi are fishing, and it's just some background Na'vi. He doesn't even have a name, but he's casting a net in the he sun. He does have a get, name. I'm sorry. I don't he know does. what his name is. Exactly. I didn't watch the- Not in the film. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's Na'vi, fisherman Na'vi. We're getting three. more com comments. Stop yeah. interrupting him. <laughs> but there's a, it's a phenomenal shot of the sun setting behind and it's the ocean and he's casting a net and the and and pulling the and it it is just like a three second shot just a filler to establish location it is a beautiful shot but i wasn't thinking oh the navi are so innocent and lovely i was thinking Wow, what an amazing CGI shot. Yeah, but to counter your point, we this is something me and Aaron talk about a lot on the show, is the levels of quality, whether it be the sound design, whether it be the, the, the score, the cinematography, the CGI, is we kind of say that it goes from it's so bad you notice it to so good you don't notice it to so excellent that you notice it again. Mm -hmm. And that's like they've broken through that ceiling mm -hmm. to where it's now so impressive that you are thinking about it. Maybe it's taking you out of the movie for a little bit because you're like, wow, I, How this music is so good. That. How yeah. did John Williams do this music? Mm -hmm. But it's because it's so good. I feel like that's a, a point where I can give it to them. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying the CGI is bad. Absolutely not. I think, but it did take me out of the movie. And in the end, I mean, I'm, an, I'm a CGI artist. Yeah, well, from I, your perspective, from yeah. working in the industry, your goal is for it to not be noticed. I don't want to be noticed. It's all in service to the, the plot. It's all in service to the storyline. I feel like it's the same way with Foley artists and sound design. It's like if they notice, then unless they're looking for it. That's a, that's a hard line to toe because we're looking for it. Because yeah. we're going to come and talk about it on a podcast or because of your industry. We are inherently looking for I mean, me. Roger Deakins famously says, like, the best cinematography is the one you don't notice. Yeah. It's, it's, and his style isn't a style, it's whatever the story requires. But then he'll never win that fight with me because I'm going to go into the movie and say, yeah, I saw Roger Deakins as a cinematographer, <laughs> yeah. so I was analyzing every shot, like, why did he yeah. pick this angle? Why is the light coming from over there? And then he's sitting at home 
saying I failed. But there are there are <laughs> but you're noticing. Yeah, he's crying. Andrew noticed. <laughs> but there's there's examples too. I there's a difference between noticing because it's good and noticing because it's bad. I was just watching a movie called uh, Out of the Furnace, which I think is really good. But there's a shot where I thought of you because they're driving down the road and the lighting is kind of orange, but they do that kind of blue orange. Mm. Contrast where mm. way in the background there's a barn and it's lit up blue. And I was like, wow, that's really blue. I was like, Aaron would be saying that's distractingly blue. Oh, and that was yeah. Like negative. Yeah. But then there are moments where you in the movie where I noticed the lighting and the cinematography for being exceptional. Right. So I feel like personally, if I notice it because it's good and that takes me out of the movie, I'm I feel like that's a win. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, I mean they're making this this other world. I don't know how they would do Avatar they can't. with the, the, the world that they crafted, you know, with the script yeah. that they had. How do they not? Can yeah. you explain, like, why it was, like, so good that it pulled you out? Like, what were they doing that really captured your attention to distract from the story? Because there's other CGI movies, you know, that I feel like, for me, for the untrained eye in CGI, look equally as good equally as good as way of the water yeah like they're they're phenomenal movies you know like i can't tell sometimes you know like so what was it about avatar way of water that kind of pushed it over the edge for well, you? everyone knew it was cgi right mm -hmm. it's touted as a cgi movie like it's actually one of the rare cases in hollywood where somebody goes we're making cgi <laughs> of computer made almost three billion dollars <laughs> maybe everyone else just yeah. marketing cgi <laughs> you know like if cgi <laughs> is so bad yeah like we put all of this time and attention into our cgi yeah, right? come watch this movie is that an element of the topic we're talking about like is it an element of trust because when they they tout no cgi people think oh i don't have to worry about bad cgi yeah but Avatar can market it because in 2009 they put out this great groundbreaking mm -hmm. CGI. So people are like, oh, I have the trust. Yeah, maybe that is what it boils down yeah. to. It's the context of it. Like any art, context yeah. matters. Yeah. In the case of uh, Avatar Way of Water, the, 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 uh, well, you know going into it is CGI. And I was, in, I was watching it specifically for the CGI. So perhaps that... Maybe did. you're already out of it. I was already out of it. <laughs> it's not... Uh, see, that's just it. Uh, the Navi and all that storyline, it was not really something I'm interested in personally. I'm a sci-fi nut too, which is weird. But those movies, I'm like, oh, okay. You know, James Cameron, a successful director, but I'm like... Mm. Bro is literally hating on Avatar Way to Water. Quathy. Quathy. <laughs> Especially given I'm you, a CGI you're, artist. You're not a big um, James Cameron guy, you're saying? That's the king of sequels. Oh, he is the king of sequels. I, I'm see I my con my controversial opinion. You brought up Ridley Scott earlier. I'm not a big Ridley Scott <gasps> person. But <laughs> the gasp, <laughs> yeah, taking it back. The movie that he just came out with didn't do well. Napoleon? It, no, not no, Napoleon. There was something else he was working on. What am I thinking of? Gladiator Two hasn't come out yet. I'm so excited. That was gonna be good. Napoleon oh. was a was a good movie. I haven't seen it, but I know that like, you mentioned the battle scene. I know nobody does big practical battle sequences quite like Ridley. I'm I'm here for Gladiator 2. I love Gladiator. It's just a lot of other Ridley Scott movies I'm not a huge fan of. I love the I love Gladiator. You gotta see it. And you gotta see the BTS because there's there's a lot of CGI, but you never would know. In Gladiator? In in not or Gladiator in Napoleon. Napoleon. Napoleon, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks, I mean, the trailer, it looks really good. Like, it, mm -hmm. I like the way it's colored and mm -hmm. definitely, but it, it, it doesn't interest me too much, I'll, I guess I'll say. It's a historical biopic. It's, it's, it's good. Uh, it, it, Napoleon is a really troubled character, and they accurately depict him. But, th again, the, the CGI in that movie did not take me out of the movie. I was invested in the movie. The storyline following this, this guy's, you know, this historical character that we've all heard about. It gives, him, it gives you a well-rounded idea of who he was as a person. The same with Oppenheimer. It yeah. was a similar uh, biopic about a, a person and the, the destruction that he brought on the Earth and also the destruction it brought to him. Yeah. Everyone who touched that bomb and anyone who had any affiliation with it, their lives were ruined by it. And that's the whole theme of Oppenheimer, really, is everyone got destroyed by the bomb. Yeah. But mostly Japan. Mostly Japan, unfortunately. If we're... If we're. <laughs> Literally, but it because like figurative destruction, because yeah, Oppenheimer's life was ruined, his family was ruined. Uh, the senator there that was played by Iron Man, I mean, um, <laughs> Robert Downey Jr., Jr. Uh, his career was ruined by it. it. Everyone who touched that bomb was ruined. So, again, here I am talking about the story. 
because I could follow the story. Yeah. Because the visual effects didn't take me out of it. Is it because Avatar Way of Water is like all visual effects? There is no like practical. Yeah. And it's so good. For yeah. the, but it's still obviously CGI. That's the thing about it. It's still clearly CGI. There's no way around it. And that's where I think, at least in the case of Napoleon, when I watched it, I wasn't thinking at the time while I'm watching the movie that this is CGI. Yeah, it feels real. But when you go to the fridge later, you're like, wait a second. They couldn't possibly have had 300,000 extras. That was CGI. They couldn't possibly blow up a horse. But they what about something like, we mentioned Endgame earlier, you know, like that's clearly cgi too is that it taking you out of the the end battle scene you know or so strange or not didn't well it's on earth it's it's definitely more grounded than way of the water but more grounded is like a it's a very loose it's, it's not yeah it's not necessarily grounded in terms of like realism but it's grounded in the fact that like there's pr some practical elements. Well, there, they're they're there's filming a, people. There's and, a lot more people. Yeah, humans. like they actually had a stage built that kind of represents the end product that you see. You're making me think now. So good. why is it that I was not taken out of Endgame? Right. And I think it was, sadly, and I don't want to sound disparaging because it was a very good movie. But when you think about Avatar, it has a higher class like it's a higher brow it's not an it's not a it's not a superhero action flick it's actually a morality tale whereas you're not your expectations are a little lower maybe or maybe your your dis, your suspension of disbelief is a little higher for the for 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 a marvel film than it would be for a james cameron film mm. dan just I feel like you're disagreeing that, just told me that superhero movies aren't real movies i didn't say that they're of a lower class. You're the you're the reason why the Batman did not get nominated for enough Oscars. I blame, Oscar I blame nominated. you entirely. Oh, that that committee. They don't is get really. It's unfair biased. that, in my opinion, it's unfair that they don't get taken more seriously. If it's sci-fi, if it's or if it's superhero, it never gets nominated. So it depends because Avatar: Way of the Water was nominated for Best Picture amongst a bunch of other awards. And again, that's because it's James Cameron and his high the technology, technology, and the technology too. of it. But is, is, which story did you enjoy more? Avatar The Way of Water or Endgame? Endgame, absolutely. But is that still a lower class movie in comparison? No, it's just I'm a blue collar. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go to wine soirees and <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't watch The Handmaiden. Um, <laughs> I, I think, no, I, did. I think that, um, I don't know. I think that way, I'm guessing the minority camp of thinking that way of the water had a good story. Because I feel like I've heard this quite complaint quite a bit now, that it's like style and, and it visuals was, over story. It was, it was ham, it was hammy to me. It was very heavy handed with the... I like the Bad family guys, elements. The, the industrial, the, the the industrial military complex coming in and hurting the people and destroying the planet and nature being attacked. It's, it was very... Damn, it's like an 80s movie, though, in that sense. It's like heavy handed with the, the villain elements, but at the same time focuses on kind of this like narrow family focus where the adventure is amongst the kids. Mm -hmm. That to me feels like an 80s movie, like Goonies or something like that. Yeah. I'm kind of in between both of you. We're talking a lot Way about Avatar, Avatar, though. I yep. want you guys to guess how many visual effects shots are in Avatar. Way of All the of them. All of them. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> All the shots. What was that, like 3,000? 3,000 shots in yeah. an average movie that long? Well, that was a long uh, movie. It's like almost yeah. three hours. 32. 3,200? Yeah. Yep. Just 32? Go That's way more than 32. 3,200. 3,200. <laughs> okay, both saying 3,200? Yeah. I mean, you guys are wrong. Avatar Way of the Water has 3,240 visual effect shots. Ah, Price is right. <laughs> <laughs> the yapper. <laughs> the yapper. <laughs> uh, it says... Uh, of which 2,225 are water shots. So oh, more than half are water shots. And I want to point out. It's also done by Weta, which did one of the other movies we talked about earlier. Oh my goodness. Weta Studios are, to me, it's ILM and Weta. Those are the ones that you always go to for what, if you want to do it seriously, ILM and Weta. Yeah. They are so good. But they've been calling us trying to get on one of our projects. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Speak well of me. <laughs> I'll write on your coattails. <laughs> he, he said he needs four weeks to do a uh, 
army simulation. It said one week for prelim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a one man animating machine. Yeah, I, I feel like the tingling sensation down my arm. <laughs> is, is that bad? Is that, is that bad? bad? <laughs> okay, so. We've talked a whole lot about CGI. Um, I don't think I have any more questions for you, Dan. Aaron, do you have any more questions for Dan? No, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, this was an awesome episode. It, and again, it's a continuation of what we were talking about in the Discord. Mm -hmm. uh, again, if you haven't seen these videos that Dan put in the Discord, they're linked in this video. Definitely go check them out because it's got some cool information about a lot of these movies that we're talking about and how... You didn't even know that it was CGI and it was right in front of you. And that's why it's good. <laughs> right. No matter how much people complain about CGI, it's going to be in every movie you watch. Yeah, it's just a tool that you use to improve your story. It's in 99.9% .9 of movies. Yeah, it's, it's all over. Like you even said, something as little as just changing the direction of your eye. Uh, David Fincher's editor, I forget his name, but he was talking about how they pay so much attention to when a character blinks. That if he blinks at the wrong time, they animate his eyes to stay open wow. during that conversation. Mm -hmm. So you're not missing the weight of how they're delivering their words. Mm -hmm. we made if they don't have a take where his eyes are open during that line, which we, is crazy. We made a low budget short film that's six minutes, six and a half minutes long. You can find that on our page. And that short film that we made, just the, like with a small crew, has VFX shots in oh. it that Aaron put in. Because we're edit. professional. <laughs> <laughs> we don't mess around. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to point out one last thing, is that anyone who might say, well, Hollywood lied then, they lied to me. That's what movies are. Lies. They're lies. Acting none, lies. It's not real. Like, none but of it they lied to me in real life. Damn. Remember in Brokeback Mountain when uh, they were, you know, breaking up and they were devastated? They never really were in a relationship. <laughs> Little known fact about that movie. It was, it was a lie. Oh, <laughs> man, you've undone all that reality, man. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's an industry of lies and, and tricks, and they're, they're trying to put whatever tagline will put your butt in the seat at the theater and get you to buy your ticket. So if that tagline is best movie of the summer, and it is literally the second day of summer, guess what? They're pulling that out of their ass. Yeah. There's no way they could possibly know that. Or if it's that Glenn Powell and Sidney Sweeney are having an affair, they'll say it. It gets you into the theater. That man has, I saw a post saying he has the, the chemistry with everyone. Yeah, it says, it, says, it says POV, I show up to the chemistry with my co-star contest and Glenn Powell is my opponent. He's <laughs> unlimited chemistry. Yeah. He, he's blowing up right now for sure. But yeah, he's been blowing up the last couple of years. Yeah. He's a really he's a cool guy. Watching him in interviews, man, I hope <laughs> I hope he stays cool. Yeah. Every time somebody gets cool, they put out news. They're like, surprise! This man is an axe murderer. <laughs> I'm like, just when I started to like him, <laughs> right? Yeah, don't get too attached. Oh my god, you can't. It's unfair. Yeah. Dan, thanks so much for coming on. Do you have any other closing thoughts? Just. CGI and VFX, if you see it, you They're doing it wrong. If you're doing it wrong. If it's too bad or if it's too good, it has to just be invisible. And yeah. that's where it's the best. Story over everything. That's it. That's a great way to end the show. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. We post new full episodes every Monday and Thursday. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss anything. Because sometimes we put out extra content. Uh, where else are we, Andrew? We're on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, X. We are all over the place. You can also check us out on anywhere you listen to podcla podcasts. Blah, blah, blah. That's po that's podcasts. I said that on purpose. Um, on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify Podcasts, on Google Pod Podcasts. You can find us on all of those platforms. Um, and you make sure to go on Spotify and rate and review the show. You can give us five stars, which helps the show get found by new audience members. We do have a kind of small following on Spotify, so it would help us out a ton if you took a few seconds to do that. But the most bestest thing that you can do for us mm -hmm. is by sharing us with friends and family, because that is the best way to help the show grow organically. And we're trying to get to more ears and eyes so we can grow this audience, get more people in our Discord. We just passed 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is a huge, huge landmark, and we're very excited to celebrate. Let's go. Um, and we just want to go up and up and build this community of lovers of all things film and media. And then we can talk to other industry professionals as well. Yeah. Leave us comments on this video. Tell us what other topics you'd like to see. You want to see Dan back, boost his confidence, tell him how nice he looks. 
Oh, we got a haircut Ooh. today. I was gonna say talk uh, to uh, 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 yeah. on camera, he's got sharpen up. I told the barber, I was like, I'm gonna be on camera today. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So your work is gonna be on display. Put their card up. But we <laughs> we respond to dang near hundred percent of comments, whether it's TikTok, yeah. there's, a, there's been a lot recently. Um, whether it's YouTube, wherever, we respond to pretty much every comment. So hit yeah. us up, we'll have a conversation. Absolutely. Thanks so much for watching and that's, that's a wrap. wrap.